Right, Johnny, you mentioned earlier that you've got a button presser at home. Now, you must put an awful lot of faith into that button presser. Um, my button presser, since I began, has been my nephew, Scott, who he's worked with me all, all his working life since he left school. Well, he's actually working at school. Um, not not clicking for me, but at certain people at the races, doing little, little bits and pieces. Um, recently, I haven't used Scott as much because I've only been doing it part-time and my sister clicks for me a bit. Do you know what? He's, he's part of um, the success, I would say, or, or a big part of the success. You get a rapport with somebody, he's absolutely brilliant for me. I've got my utmost faith in him, although... He's going to see this now and remind me of that. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's very, very good, Scott. Um, just got a great working relationship. Right, Scott's obviously very, very good, because you just said he is, but there must have been a disaster where Scott has see the, messed see, right up. See, the thing is, yes, there, there will be disasters, because invariably, one thing I do, um, which is different to, I don't know, a lot of in runners, not that I know what everybody does, but if there's a 28 runner maiden at Newmarket, a lot of people think I'm a freakish for this. I can learn all the colours of all the horses in probably 10 minutes. So I know every horse and I know the colours. So I'm giving him a commentary. And I think this makes his job a lot easier. Um, so I think he made in the last four or five years we've worked I think he's made probably six mistakes but the good thing is with uh, actually backing it's only going to be one unit it'd be sort of a lot worse if I was laying because obviously if you're laying a 10 50s one or some or a 10 hundred or one you do a grand if he makes a mistake but if I'm having sort of two or three hundred quid a click you do two or three hundred quid whatever I've just had a thought I mean if you can learn them that quick you know how much commentators earn you're in well, the wrong game. I, I, do you know something? Um, it's so strange, really, because a, a guy, uh, the, the first bloke I worked for, the very first race, he had a presser, and he went on, and he said, he rung me back five minutes after the race, and that it, I can't remember, it was probably a, a maiden at Windsor or something. And he come, he said, I just cannot believe this. He said, I, you know, he said, you should be a commentator, you know. And I said, I don't know who'd want to listen to a carrot cruncher drolling on forevermore. <laughs> don't think I got the voice for uh, commentating, to be honest. You'd be right, don't I'll wait. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, right, monetarily figures. Quick, biggest disaster, how much? Um, like I say, it's never been, because I'm a backer. Um, I remember I went, uh, I remember one, one day I went to, not uh, monetary, uh, I was at, did a double up one day, it was Windsor in the evening, may have been Brighton in the day or somewhere like that and I think no, I think I saw 12 races, I called 11 losers, I think uh, I think the word Stevie Wonder was branded round by Scott then and things like that but yeah, I, th I think I'd done about three and a half grand that day. On a happier note, biggest win? Um, that was at a a very cold Lingfield in early January, four or five years ago. Um, Mark Johnson had one in the race, was 101 from a furlong out. Stan Moore had a horse, I caught in the corner of my eye blasting it, and I got matched a thousand to 18 pound it. I think, I, I think all in, we won about 24 grand on the race. So, favourite track then, Lingfield? <laughs> Unfortunately not. Uh, that was where the good times ended at Lingfield, <laughs> unfortunately, and getting kicked out of uh, various spots where I was uh, successful from at Lingfield. So they, uh, I don't know. Favourite track, uh, you know, to go to, I, I love York. York is, for me, the best track. My family's been going out there for 26 years on holiday. Um, and it is a good track in running. Um, Bath is okay, but I think the facilities at Bath are not that great. But I, I do like Bath because it's just up the road and it reminds me of a lot of my childhood going there. So how many days would you go out on average now? Um, it varies from week to week. In the summer, I'll definitely do a lot more. Uh, 
so much racing. I tried to do five, six, seven days in the summer. Uh, the winter, not so much because I have got other things going on. So, you know, I try and sort of split things around really. So do you, uh, do you do any form study and have any pre-race opinions? Um, well, as I touched on earlier, the Turner's Touch race, which uh, was about 10, 12 years ago, and people still remind me of the name. So um, I followed the game all my life. Um, I'm not saying I don't know the horses, because I do. Um, I don't want an opinion, to be honest. I just want to say, I don't know, say Cato Star would be run against a, a handicapper from Worcester. If I see the handicapper from Worcester flying and making ground, I want to be with that one. You know, and I know a lot of people say, well, you know, but I just want to see what I see with sort of a, a blank canvas sort of thing. It's one of the hardest parts of your job, must be slogging around the road, especially in the summer, where it oh, this can God. be awful. How many miles a year do you reckon you do? Um, going back about three or four years, my average was 70,000 miles a year because I would do a lot of the northern tracks, Catrick. On, on one ridiculous day, on a Sunday, I drove to Musselburgh and back. Um, that was a bit of a, that was a bit of a jaunt. Uh, but I was at Bath the next day, so it, it, it didn't really matter. Um, but yeah, about now I'm doing sort of, I would say, 40 or 50,000 because I've cut down a bit and sort of picking me bunches, really. Do you think that making a living from betting and running is going to be sustainable long term? I think... I think it's definitely getting harder without any, without any doubt whatsoever. There isn't, there isn't no doubt whatsoever with that. Um, I think there's still money in the markets. I think there's still chances. Um, where it'll be in a few years, God only knows. Because I think that if you asked the question five years ago, I would say, this is me for life. I'm sort of almost touching 50 now. Some people might say I look a lot older. Um, <laughs> but I think, uh, you know, I would like to, I, was, I would think then, that I would do this till I retire, uh, but now I, I don't think I will. But you know, you just gotta just gotta roll with the punches, I suppose, and, and, and do the best you can. Uh, as liquidity on racing on Betfair has decreased, it means that there's probably a lot less mug punters leaving orders up and running, which I understand you guys used to rely on to snap up. Do you now think it's just a lot of shrewdies eating each other? This is a. This is a very um, interesting subject because, see, I, I, I hate the words mug punters, although there is, undoubtedly, you know, I was a mug punter when I was a punter, but in running, you're right, it's probably the right phrase, actually. Um, there certainly isn't no more people who would just go home on a Monday night and watch Windsor and put their money in the markets. Um, if I'm honest... I can remember a lot of people, there's a lot of rubbish spoke about, oh, he's got so much advantage in terms of seconds and things like that, or, you know, I would like to be on a level playing field with everybody. That's what I would like. I would like everybody to get the, as quick as, I think the liquidity would be better, and I think there would be something for everybody, and, you know, they would be able to market it better, I think. So you think the people at home thinking that they're on a level playing field, they could beat you, and your skill would outbeat them, is that what you're saying? Not, not as such. Not, not, not in. Um, not in a, you know. I don't want that to sound in an arrogant way because it it isn't meant like that in any way. Um, it's just I feel that you know you would get some races right, they would get some right, but it'd be generated through. You know, there'd be so many playing at it. It would be there'd be some there for everybody. I feel. So somebody that's looking at this now and they're thinking, I will tell you what, I could have a go at that. What's the golden rules for a racing and running punter? Uh, start with a million and end up with half, I think. <laughs> no. Um, it's supposed to be positive. <laughs> um, no. Uh, I don't know, really. I mean, you know, the boxes. I don't know whether the boxes are doing, the lads in the boxes are doing well or not. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I'd love to see more people come into the game to entice them into the game. You know, um, 
yeah, I think I think the pictures would be if we could get the pictures more or I marked it better from Betfair, but and even Betdac, but I don't think that they. Uh, I, th I I think that it's whereas when I first came into the game, fourteen fifty, it was a priority, the in running. Now I think it's more of a headache to to the to the firms. I think. Is there anything a fledgling in running punter should avoid doing at all costs? Um. I don't know really. I yeah, well, I would say laying at the the massive prices. I think that you could potentially end up losing a fortune, but it's not really for me to say. You know, there'll be people. I guarantee there'll be people on here who'd say, "Well, I made plenty at that." So, you know, I, I can't. I can't really say avoid anything. Just the bad tracks, really. I got me good tracks and me bad tracks. Plenty of bad tracks. So. Now, have you thought about twitching in foreign climbs? Never thought about going to foreign racing and giving it a go there, or would the expenses make it non-viable? I thought about Ireland, definitely, because for what I do, I think there's um, definitely a gap in the market. Definitely. I think I'd have a chance there. Um, politically, uh, Ireland, I don't know what, how they see in runners, how, how you'd be frowned upon. So, you know, it's difficult to uh, difficult to know, really. Okay, so would you advise others to give it a go in running? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put them off. But, but I would say what I would say to them: don't expect the lavish lifestyle and <laughs> the great gains, because it, because it, those those days are gone. I feel, to be honest.